Hello everybody, welcome to our October box watercolor tutorial. Um, you guys had in your box a couple of practice sheets. These are to do on your own, just to experiment with your paints. Um, we printed the design on the watercolor paper so it will not come off. You can also, the leaves are great practice for um, getting them wet, adding some green into some yellows, and um, blending some colors. So these are for you to do at your own pace, on your own time. Again, perfect warm-ups, get used to your paint, getting those backgrounds wet, different things like that. I'm going to show you guys some um, technique today as we are going to do a tree watercolor and we are also going to do some mushrooms which are kind of my favorite thing to paint and fall with watercolor. Um, you have two separate pieces. I'm going to paint on one just to make it a little bit more easy to follow along because we are going to be going back and forth from one to the next as one is drying to make sure our tutorial is not super long for you. But before I get started I have my colors out. Um, I'm going to be using a green and obviously you can use if you're a VIP member you got the full set of paints you can use whatever colors you want. You're going to want to have a green a type of yellow. I'm using the yellow ochre. Um, it's kind of more of a golden yellow and orange. And then you also have, I'm going to use a little bit of a red, and then we have the vermilion, which is also a kind of yellow orange color and a nice burnt umber brown. So those are colors I'm going to be pouring on here. I'm also going to set up my area first. I like to use a little bit of masking tape. Let me find the end on this one. There we go. I like to tape it down on the corners just to make sure my paper is not going to swell up or move out of the way as we are painting. You're going to need a pencil. I'm going to use a Sharpie today so that way you can see my lines and a cup of water with a paper towel. Now in your box you also got a turquoise brush. That is a watercolor brush for you to add to your collection. It's a nice soft larger round brush. It's what I'm going to be using today. It's very similar to the one I have here at my home studio. I did forget to bring one of those cool brushes. I need to bring some of those here. Just taking these, always making sure I get my watercolor area set before we start. And I'm also going to take the time and pour my paints into my palette. Now I have just a basic palette that I like to use. Um, gives me these little um, circles that I can add water to water down some paint. You can also use a paper plate at home um, or any type of plastic like old Tupperware lid works great as well. Right now that I have my paint poured on my palette, and again I got a green, I got yellow, I'm using that yellow ochre which is that golden color, a little bit of orange, and I got two different reds and a brown. Now when you're pouring your paints too, you want to make sure that you pour a little bit at a time because you can also add more to your palette and that way you won't be wasting your paint. Also if you get one that is um, separating a little bit, just squeeze your tube before you make sure it's tight and just squeeze your tube around, just kind of mixing them up. So especially if they've sat for a while or you haven't used that color before, just give a nice little squeeze. So I'm just going to set these guys aside right where I don't want the paint, right there. And I'm going to start first. We're going to work on our tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to draw just a basic tree trunk and you can use a pencil remember you can pause the video anytime and what I'm going to do and again I'm gonna use a marker so you can see it's kind of hard when I use a pencil for you to see lines and I'll draw a line on this too because this is our two sheets of paper don't judge me those are not equal at all but on this side, I'm going to do my tree. So I'm going to start with how wide I want my tree trunk to be right here at the base. So I'm going to draw just a couple little lines right at the base here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pull right on up. And it's going to narrow in. Okay. So we know where our tree trunk is. These are all the beautiful, gorgeous sleeves up here. And then I'm just going to... Pull out to a branch. Let's see, pull right back in. Maybe there's another little branch in here. Going on up into another. Branch and it goes out this way. 
And you guys will get a pencil too. So it does not have to be perfect at all. We're going to kind of go over all this with our watercolor a little bit later. And again, pause the video if you guys want one more time. You want to add another branch in over here. So we have. Don't mind my dogs. Remember, pause the videos um, whenever you need to, okay? I don't like to pause and wait for them to go too long or the videos will take me forever to upload. So I drew my tree over here and we just want to do, and I'm going to kind of draw right along the base too a little bit. And we're going to work on a wet on wet technique and don't mind if my pen bleeds a little bit. So meaning if you were in the watercolor for the succulent box, that box was a very basic watercolor box just for you to get used to your paints and also I like to mix up each month um, where we have some boxes that are really easy that we don't have to put much effort and thought into and then there will be some other months where they're a little bit more challenging project I like the mermaid you guys had a little bit more um, some people had some difficulty with that but I'm trying to have various levels because sometimes there's just months where you just want to open it up and you just want to create something nice and easy and feel successful so that's why I do try to mix up the boxes because we have all levels of painters in our um, in our group so I'm going to now I'm done talking about that take a little bit of water give it a tap and I'm going to just paint anywhere and again don't mind some of that wires bleed through I'm trying not to really touch my branch too much I'm gonna paint out anywhere that I'm gonna want the leaves to be Oh, I'm just going nice outline here and then I'm going to paint right on in and this might be a video too where you just watch it first before you even paint it I don't like to use the sharpie so much when I watercolor when it's wet because it does take the pigment but if I do pencil like I said earlier you would not be able to see it very well that was some of the feedback I got on some of my online tutorials I did. But it's alright, this pigment is kind of be nice. I'm gonna use purple color, which just make my tree a little bit more red on those spots. So I'm getting that water. And you can go like quite a way up with your tree too. It doesn't have to be. I want to keep you away from is making it a very circular elementary tree on the edges I want the creep the trees don't grow perfectly they don't grow in perfect circles unless that's really what you're going for but next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick one of my colors doesn't matter which one you want I'm gonna start with a little bit of the reds so I want my tree be a little bit more red and towards the center and I'm kind of mixing the two of those and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to dab right on wherever I want. You don't have to do it just like this either. If you want to start with a little bit more of the orange colors, too, you can. The reason I'm adding a little bit more of the reds to mine is because I have that sharp. brush. Maybe I'll take a little bit of orange. You can also add a few drips of water. Add some pigment into that water. There we go. That should just nice. I'm just going to dab it right out and see how it's just going to um, spread out and make those really cool veins. Add a little bit of yellow in here too. You want to take with these paints, whoops, you want to add some water with them. Okay, you don't want to take that just that thick pigment, it's not going to move like you want it to. I'm just going to dab and I'm just lightly taking this brush, just dabbing those colors through. Space 
in between the tree and the branch because I could always come back a little later too. shadow. Notice what I'm not doing with Butterfly. I'm not working my brush really hard back and forth. I'm just lightly dabbing, moving the paint around. It actually looks pretty cool where that got like kind of a purple shade here. Okay, more yellows in here. Too, or this pencil line to be able to paint over my branch as well. I'm just gonna dab right on out. And just really push out those tips of that brush, give it a brush for a reason. And a little bit of reds in there too. I know we don't get too many trees with red up here, but Alaska. It's still a very fall color and it'll blend right in. Notice you can also blend if I want like some of this red. I'm blending a little bit of red in with that orange. You can mix any of those colors that you want. You can mix a little red and or yellow and orange together you can. watercolor paper that I have this bigger sheet um, I just got from Walmart they have a stack of 50 of them I think it was ten dollars it's pretty decent paper it's not too shabby especially for the price point Now, if you are a VIP member and you wanted your tree to be even brighter, remember you have some different yellows in your box. If you wanted to brighten it up some more, totally can. Let me get this wet again out here, kind of dried up. looking very cool just with the white background and everything on there too. My tree keeps growing. It's growing into... <laughs> and if you get the fire, I'm just going to swoop it on back. Wash up your brush once in a while. Some fresh color a little bit. And then just give them dab. Get some hints of that bright orange right on here. Just spread it out and it's just gonna do its thing. So we got that wet background. And you can hear a little bit more red. Watercolor is one of those paints you literally just gotta go with the flow on this. Now if you get too much water or paint on that area too. You can also just take a little bit of paper towel and just dab it right off. Or if you don't like an area there, just dab right off. <clears throat> it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do a little bit more yellow up here. Maybe your tree's a little bit smaller, that's okay. And every tree is going to be different. Watering down. If your paint has way too much pigment to it, water it down a little bit. It's 
pretty good. So now that we got that nice base coat on there, we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna get ready to do our toadstools. Now that our tree over here is resting, we are going to get ready to paint on some of our mushrooms. Now you can pencil at home. I'm gonna use um, just painting in lightly with my with my brush. Excuse me, I take up. Clean my brush off using the same color, same color palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my light yellow. Black down there, and I'm gonna curve for one of my mushrooms up here. So I want to make a nice curve like toadstool. I'm just gonna curve the top and I'm just gonna curve right along the bottom. Do some of those big large red ones that are on in our yard some here. I'm just going to pull down stem right here and then I'm going to make one that is going to be a little bit higher up here and maybe we'll level this top and they don't have to be perfect either going down and I'm just going to lightly draw in So again, remember to pause these if you need to pause them. Um, what I'm going to do before I paint my mushrooms in is I want to create some cute like ferns, greenery, some cranberries. So I'm going to take next some of my green. I'm just going to water that down a little bit. And I'm just going to use the tip of my brush. I'm just going to push down and pull back. I'm just going to push down and pull back. And I'm just going to continue these guys right on down. I'm going to put another one in there as well. You can also mix a little bit of the green and the yellow together. These kind of ferns to get a little bit wider as we go, go down. Okay, a little bit of that brown right underneath too. So I'm taking just a smidge of this brown. I'm just gonna go right underneath. You got that VIP box. You can use different greens as well. Pick it up a little bit and just thin out that top just a hint. and draw coming right on up here. And maybe it's just gonna curve up a little bit. Pull down. And back, it's pushing down. Very more paint when I need it. Pushing out the tip and it's lifting right on up. I'm gonna take a little bit of that green and brown I got right here. Just a little bit more. You guys be creative with this. You don't have to be perfect. Thank you. 
my brush. Don't want to add that brown in. Again, if you have the VIP box, you have various other greens you could use too. One of the great things about being a VIP member. So now what I'm going to do um, while my ferns are kind of drying there is I'm going to take a little bit of my brown I'm just twist it with my brush in there. And you can use a smaller brush from your brush kits too if you want. Any of the brushes that I gave you um, in the paint kit also work for watercolor. I just like these bigger soft ones are kind of nice. Is I want to, I'm going to drop to make some cranberries. So I'm just going to pull right on up the little stick here and I'm just going to make a little branch. It's just going to come up. A couple of berries on it. Maybe down here there's also going to be a little bit of cranberries. So I just draw those little branches. There we go. And I'm going to let those guys dry. So while our ferns are drying pretty quickly, our tree's going to take a little bit to dry because we did a pretty wet background on it, but it's looking really cool. And we are going to work on our toadstools and I'm going to mix a little bit of my water into my red, the lighter red. You can mix a little bit of orange and red together. And I'm just going to go right up to, and I want you to leave any spots that you want on your toadstool, you're just going to leave white. So I'm just kind of going around. A little bit of paint is actually going to go a very long, long way. More, it's like on the outside. spots to be and then I just start filling them in leaving little little white spots peeking through there don't about them being perfect or anything same thing with my second mushroom up here and I might just throw it around and I'm doing pretty long skinny little circles Wash your brush off as often as you need. Add more water to your palette when you need it. And notice my mushrooms are not as dark as I'm going to want them to be. I'm just kind of laying down that base coat because I can always add and shade and make them darker. But when you're doing watercolor, you can't 
make them lighter. So. Mix a little bit of that gold and orange and parts of it here. I'm just dabbing in here just to give it a little more depth and dimension and some different shades of color. So I just mix a little bit of orange and the gold and I'm just dabbing in between some areas that are already painted red. Give it that warm tone. These videos are just for you guys to start. Um, you have that extra paper. You have the paints now. I'm gonna take a little bit of my darker red. I'm just gonna go right along the outside. And just dab that in here. If you feel like you got too many spots too, you can just paint some over some. It's a perfect season to do watercolor right now. Vibrant colors outside to give you inspiration. It's a nice, easy craft to do, like when you have some soup or put together some dinners in the oven. Very nice. Now, while we're working on some of that red, I'm going to do a little bit of the berries here, taking some of my red color, and I'm just gonna do a really basic little circle. And you just want to leave um, a little bit of red. So I draw it and then I just leave, I mean, a little bit of white right there for a shine. Paint it on. on the moment and have intent of what you're creating. And I'm going to go back and add just a little bit more detail onto some of my ferns. So I'm just taking a little bit of the green paint and I'm just going right down the middle. And I'm just going to make just some little crosses out on some little ferns. And they've dried up just a little bit, just again. there. I'm going to mix a little bit of green and yellow together. Let's mix a little green and yellow. Put a little bit of water in there. And then make some little berry leaves for my cranberries. So I'm just going to just make these little like teardrop shapes. And they're not going to connect. So I'm going to go out a little bit. I'm going to make a little bit more over here. And they don't all 
I'll have to connect into the little cranberry branch. Very cute. So now we're ready to add a little bit of depth and dimension to our mushrooms. We're going to take a little bit of that yellow first. Take, add some water to some of this yellow. Off, take a little bit of that water down yellow, and I'm just going to shade right underneath my mushroom. I'm going to leave a little bit of white on some of the stock that I want highlighted. I'm going to take a little bit more on this one, Ooh, it's a little dark. I'm making underneath the cap. Let's add a little bit darker. I'm leaving this white shade here. And I'm going to take a little bit of brown, adding some water to it, just a little bit on there. I want it to be pretty vibrant. Let's roll in to the brush. And I'm going to go right along to make these lines right underneath. And I'm just going to. Form right on down. Add a little texture and go along that outside too. I'm going to take more brown and I'm just going to push down and pull up. So we'll right outside the stock a little bit. worried about it being too perfect so I'm gonna come back with the sharpie and fine-tune it but I do want to make some mix a little bit of the yellow and the green and I'm just gonna dab right at the base just gonna look like a little bit of moss right up in here and I'm just gonna take a little bit of water right at the edges and just kind of fade it out We're just gonna let this guy dry and then we're going to come back to our tree so now for our tree I'm gonna take some of my brown and mix a little bit of my yellow and I'm just going to highlight and paint right down on my right side where I want everything a little bit lighter Again, mix a little bit of that yellow and that brown. Hold on. And I'm going to take a little bit of that dark brown. Sorry about that. Need to pause. My dogs. The mailman came. So if you hear the dogs barking once in a while, they're on high alert. So I'm mixing a little bit of water into some of this brown. And it's going to be pretty pigmented because I want it to be pretty dark. And I'm just going to pull, and as I go down, I'm just going to wiggle my brush, and wiggle right on this base too, and start filling in some of my branches. I'm going to get some wiggle, I want to leave some of that showing through. Your branches in here. You 
just to have fun with this. And remember we have the pumpkin and the leaf painting through the practice on as well. black with your browns as well too. down here I'm just going to use a damp brush I'm just going to lightly dab and fade out a little bit of this water so you can once you have some on there you can just wiggle it smooth it out You can decide if you want to kind of make mossy and mix a little green and brown at the bottom and do very similar kind of mossy green and that golden and just dab in right at the base here. I'm going to take your clean brushes. Wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Add a little bit more dark brown in those areas. My brush off, and then I'm going to take some of these red and oranges and I'm just going to dab on with very pigmented paint so it doesn't have as much. I'm just going to add a little bit to leaves, clean it off, if you don't want orange. I'm just going to dab, adding a little more depth and dimension right into this front. I'm going to brush in those different directions. Um, red, kind of covering over some of those branches and so Last steps on these, I just want to make some of these falling leaves. Just swoop in and do a little bit of the mix a little yellow and orange together too. And just this illusion of some of those little leaves falling. And that is it for our tree. So now going back over to our toadstools, these are nice and dry and I'm going to add, and you can do this with some black paint if you want, I'm going to use a little Sharpie, I think um, Sharpie or Fine Put Markers look really cool, um, gives it a whimsical feel to outlining some of your paintings. So I'm going to um, just outline long face and you guys should have gotten some of these I think in earlier boxes too and like right near here I'm just going to scoop right on up and add a little texture hopes and here yeah, I'm just gonna scoop line in the middle 
and they don't have to be perfect. One of the fun things about adding marker with watercolor is it gives it a whimsical effect if it's not perfect. So I'm going around with the leaves. And the back side kind of varies a little bit. And if you didn't want to do this too, you don't have to. Everybody's different with their styles. Um, I'm just showing you another way and when you're starting with bikini watercolor that just adds a fun, um, fun artistic element to your painting. Oops, it's a little wet over there. way to add just a really cool artistic feel to your painting um, you could even go and do this with your, your watercolor if you want but great starter watercolor video for you guys to start creating some of your own designs um, look forward to painting with you guys next month so we'll see you next time bye